Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Stephen Adams Show, with Ben, the intern. What's up, boys? Hey, Adam, how, much, how are you? So? Man, I'm excited to get started. Been a long week. Got got the uh, holiday week coming up, which won't be coming up. It will have passed by the time you see this video. Nope. But, uh, you know, good stuff. I'm excited. Awesome. Uh, hey, um, uh, Ben, is, is the sun out where you're at? Uh, listen. Because I noticed you got your guns out today, <laughs> and I assume it must yeah. be a sunny day. Uh, that, that, that'd be the uh, BB guns, right? Yeah to, to, yeah, to clarify, it was hot a couple of days ago, and then I realized how much I like wearing uh, cutoffs, so I've just been wearing it for like three days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of working from home. Exactly, Maybe. it's fantastic. Smell you. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, but when you get on a client call, do you just put sleeves on? Yeah, they're they're detachable, they're like zippers. Yeah. yeah, nice. All right, well, we're gonna already make this video longer than we wanted to with this uh, banter, so let's get to it. All right, so if you've watched our uh, episode one, you will have uh, see it's it has it has not aged well because half of the stuff in there is no longer. It has all moved over to endpoint.microsoft.com instead of the Intune portal, which was inside of Azure. Um, plus some other things have changed. The GUIs have changed and stuff, and we feel like it's time for a refresh. But we want to keep it a little bit short because the the you if you want the conversational piece of it, um, you can go watch the other video that talks about why you should do Intune and all the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. That all is still relevant. Um, this is just to you know if you want to get a quick start, uh, we want to walk through the how to create an Intune tenant and get you all the way from Intune to Autopilot um, and do that very quickly. So yep. here we go. So the guys are gonna walk me through it and I'm just gonna click on things. Sweet. So let me share my screen cool. and we'll get going. Let's see, I've got our branding ready to go. Excellent. Sweet. So yeah, the first thing we basically do, we just need to set up a, a, a subscription um, yep. in, in Azure. So. Where do, we go that, from yeah. there? where do we go from there? Probably portal.azure.com. Yeah. Azure.com, eh? Mm hmm. Create one? Okay. Yep. yep. Okay, hold on. Let me zoom in just a wee bit. There we go. Oh. So we've got to create one. Ooh. Yeah, get, get a new email address. I so you see. could have used your Adam at Intune.training account there. This is where we're just going to use a random one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm assuming Adam at Outlook.com is going to be taken. Just, just yeah. out of guess. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Yeah. Hot mail. Hot That's mail. amazing. All right. Complex password. And okay. I believe you want to set it in the US this time instead of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, where we had it previously. What, in the upside down place? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to watch Adam solve the puzzle. This is so good. Done. 4.7 seconds. Good work, Adam. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I do it faster. Hold on. Let me go back. <laughs> I didn't know I was getting tired. I didn't know I was getting tired. Uh, oh, that's so good. Come on. Okay, cool. So we've we've registered a, a, a subscription now. Um, you can obviously see how easy that was. So if we hit uh, manage Azure Active Directory view in the middle screen there, Adam, it's going to come up and say, this is your AAD tenant. You don't have one. So we want to create one right at the top in the middle. Right there, yep. Um, so this is where we're creating it via Azure and using that as the starting point. Mm -hmm. You can also start it through the Office portal as well. Mm. So it's, oh, it's you know, your that's choice. That's a very good point, Steve, because we started from the Office portal before, and yep. that let us customize what this account, what our tenant that's name right. became. Yeah. Is yep. this going to force us to have a have no, this as my tenant name, or is there no, we can go and customize it? 
Yep. So yep, if we yep. just see where we're saying we're creating a tenant type of an Azure Active Directory. Yep. Um, we don't want to do B2C because we don't have an existing tenant. That's where you can link it to an existing. This is where we put our company name, so uh, intern.training. <laughs> Uh, and then we're going to set that as our on Microsoft without the dot in the middle. So I believe it's not a supported character. Really? That makes sense, sort of. Uh, so we go and review and create. It's all available. And oh, then... look at that. Okay, so that's very nice. That's a that's a really big change from yeah, what we had that's before. Cool. That's nice. Yeah. All right. So this is actually creating the Azure Active Directory tenancy. So that's where you get the on Microsoft tenant associated and everything associated and everything from there. So the reason why that doesn't get created when you create your initial tenant inside Azure is because Azure doesn't need AAD. Mm. Office Correct. needs it, but Azure doesn't. But parts of Azure work better with AAD associated. Okay, and so we can see here that our tenant is being created. Mm -hmm. And that error error occurred, this section there, just for those playing at home, was when Adam went to Azure Active, Azure Active Directory. Directory. Just wanting yep. to call that out. Yeah. So while that's going through, what we're going to, the, the next step we're going to look at is associating the licensing. So there's mm -hmm. a few different licensing options we can look at here. Um, previously, when we went through the video, we leveraged the pure Intune license. In this one, we're going to use the M365 E5 license because that includes Office, Windows 10 E5, and EMS. Yeah, which it's, includes Intune. it's just the easiest. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's almost taking the conversation out of the, you know, away. You just you just get that license. Yeah, it probably yep. costs a, a fair bit. As we found out recently, when we. <laughs> uh monetization to our website mm -hmm. where it, it's not a cheap license but in a lab environment you want to be able to just do stuff without having to worry about licensing exactly if your production is very limited to only e3 or associated licenses and you want to replicate that go with e3 but yeah. for what we're using it go the e5 so cool. on the left hand side check Adam, that out you can delete the tenant can I thought you were going to click on that. <laughs> to delete the tenant, you need to clean up a whole heap of stuff. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's We don't have the ability to sign into the AAD tenant without the right account. So we're going to hit new user up the top. And we're going to create adam at intern.training by intern, intern training dot on Microsoft. That's I, I'm, I'm going to type <laughs> the same thing in all the lines. Yeah. There we go. And, and if we because head, we haven't put a banner yeah. domain or anything else there, we can't change that. Uh, yeah. Create your password so that is what you want. And make sure you give it the role of global admin. Yeah. GA. Uh, set your location. It's important. Yes. You always have to have a location set to be able to set a license. Sweet. Okay. Cool. So now we'll sign in with the Adam at intern training dot on Microsoft. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go team. Passwords. So worst. now that you've got your password sorted, you should uh, go back to last week's video and and, and read about uh, Windows Update for Business, so you never need to use a password again. Windows Hello for Business. What did I say? Update for Business. Hey, update for Business. I've got updates on the mind. Yep. So, oh wow, your password expires after ninety days. That's a new card that I've seen there. I haven't seen that before. That's cool. Um. So we're going to select uh, billing. Up top. Billing. Yep. And then we're going to go purchase services, I believe. It has nothing to do with the Zoom. That's just literally no. nothing there. Oh, uh, select dark mode. 
Okay, yep, yep, definitely better. <laughs> uh, hang on, hang on, just wait. <laughs> no that is a feature. <laughs> no one should be using light mode. <laughs> that is perfect. I love it. It oh. forces it to reload the page. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So then under M365, you'll see there, and you can scroll to the right-hand side. And keep going across. So these are all the basics, and then... yeah, yeah. There's the E5 uh, option there. So you get that one there, I think, will be the one you want. So you just hit details uh, and get trial. There we go. So we now need to prove that we're not a uh, robot. So Adam's going to put his mobile phone in there off screen. Okay. So we are at the confirm your order. Cool. And hit continue. There you go. So now if you go to your users, active user, and we select Adam, and we then go and select licenses, and we'll have the ability to assign the license. So the so, first thing you see is assigned there. Perfect, yeah. because default user. Yeah. You're going to say, Ben? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, so this is obviously from admin.microsoft.com, but for, for those that like the single pane of glass, uh, you can also do this from uh, portal.azure.com uh, as well through um, yep. AAD. And one of the important things about doing it through AAD is you can associate it to a user group. That's correct. Make sure you use user groups. It makes your life easier in the long run. when Yeah, you automatic license assignment license. rules. Yeah. So... When you associate a license today, if a new feature gets added over time, it doesn't automatically get turned on for previously assigned licenses. Mm -hmm. So this is where it's super important always assign it to a group because then you can just turn it straight on for everybody rather than having to go through and turning it on all the yeah. features that are missing. So just, just a word of uh, caution on that one. Cool. So we now have our licenses or our subscription. Yep. So the next step that we're going to go and look at is branding. So I'll let Ben take the navigation for that. Uh, yeah, so uh, this will be an interesting one. I haven't done this in a while. Um, so we're going to go into the uh, Azure Active Directory, hit view, and then company branding. Get free premium trial. Do you need to... Ref no, just hit that. Uh, yeah, you'll need to uh, close out and sign back in. Or sign oh, out because it hasn't associated yep. it. Yep, yep. So, uh, you yeah. just do it from there, yeah. Portal.azure. My bad. No, no, no. Yep. And then just make sure you sign in with your intern training. Yep, yep. yep. Perfect. <clears throat> because that has the license associated to that. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, the other one did not. That makes Correct. sense. Yep. Company branding. And there there we go. So by default, if you don't have this set, the autopilot page won't pop up saying, welcome to company name. That's correct. So this is the minimum requirement. Yep. And so also for, for everyone watching, uh, you don't need to put a lot in to get this to work. You, you literally just need to fill in one thing. Um, so if you just wanted to try it out, grab an image, Chuck it in, um, and then and then we're good to go, basically. Too big. Oh, that's AI one. That's the wrong one. It's I think the be... second one in the image up the top. Yeah. That's the one. In the first video, uh, we spent a fair amount of time watching Steve figure out how to use um, Photoshop, I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> in turn, the training. training. Dot, oh, um, yeah, on Microsoft.com, yeah. Otherwise, you can do intern.training if you want. If only that domain existed, Steve. Yeah, if only. Um, so the thing with the advanced settings down the bottom, this is where you can have the icon appearing in the top part of your autopilot page and things like yeah, that. Yeah, correct. Um, we don't have any square resizable images for our tenant, um, but that's what that's for. Yep. You uh, can also... Uh, uh, yes, we do. We do. It's is it the? Ah, perfect. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. I know it's we been a long time, but we did it. Yeah. Now these aren't these aren't the 
intern.training, but no. Um, so the checkbox you set down the bottom there, Adam, we probably want to set that to yes. So this is where it allows users to stay signed in yeah. um, and show the option to tick the box to say, remember, or keep me signed in. So yeah. that's something that I'd highly recommend to do. Uh, it needs to be in the app. <laughs> yeah, good, good attempt. Yeah. <laughs> just going to slide that one in there. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you want orange? Because I could do that. I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing. Too many characters. Six. The six? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see what it turns out as. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be ugly. Maybe. F F A A B B. Definitely. Yep. All right, so we now have company branding. This is where we can go in there and add multiple for different language pa uh, language regions as well. Yep. Uh, so, okay, so that's the, the most important thing. And uh, I, I believe uh, the last thing that we need to do in the portal.azure.com, now we can do the next part, which is the MDM auth stuff from here as well, because yes. we're here, but you can actually do this stuff from uh, endpoint.microsoft.com as well. That's correct. Well, let's Indeed. just do it there then. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go to aka.ms.bmac or endpoint.microsoft.com. Still zoomed. Yep. And tenant administration. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, in the... Yep, connectors and token. No, hmm? uh, yeah, connectors and tokens. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, and then it is not there. Uh, it's under devices enrollment. What are we looking yeah, for? Yeah, enrolled devices, MDM? MDM, yeah. Oh, I knew that one. Automatic enrollment. Yep. Perfect. So for, the, for this scenario, let's just do all, all. In some organizations, you may need to set it to some while you're doing pilots and things like that just to call it out. We've done videos about, you know, what, what this yep. is, and we'll probably do more in the future. Um, it's yep. it's important around scoping, but this is just to show you how quickly it can be done. All right, so we've done our MDM auth. So now anything uh, that hits that uh, with the correct sort of autopilot stuff will will sign in or will be allowed to sign in. Um, so the next thing we need to do is set up an autopilot profile um, to actually get the thing to come up. So device question: Do do we want to set up the business store so it starts syncing? Yes. First. Um, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It can yeah. take a little while. Um, so what we're doing here is uh, going to the store to set up the sync between the store and our Intune environment uh, so that we can uh, publish applications, most notably the company portal. Um, so it, so it's a pretty important one. Settings yeah. and distribute. But yeah, it's, as Ben was saying, and uh, cutting off is it's, it's pretty important to have there. Mm -hmm. So we activate both of those for Microsoft Intune and Intune Enrollment. Uh, and then what we need to also do is when we go and select our first application, Adam, so if we go shop for my group yep. uh, and then search for company portal and select that, <clears throat> when we hit get the app, it's going to pop up a license agreement, mm -hmm. which you need to accept before you can go forward. You only need to do that once for the tenant but it's always important to remember to be like Adam and read through the terms and conditions. <laughs> exactly. Thoroughly. Yeah, you guys have all Thoroughly. seen that South Park episode, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, so this will go through. It's going to go and authorize it for your tenant. Uh, and then the last step is going into the MEMAC portal or in, uh, endpoint.microsoft portal and uh, under tenant administration and telling it to go and use it yep. under connectors and tokens. Yep. And business. We, First one on the cab, first cab off the rank, and we just hit enable there. Yep. And then we hit save up the top, and that will allow oh, us sick. to sync it. So we still need to go back to the store for business and make sure that company portal has been selected and added to which it has. Perfect. So yep. we'll see uh, six applications sync across, including these five applications there. So Perfect. that's expected. So those uh, five apps are on by default. Yep. So let's pop back over. Um, now this may still be going. We can we can uh, check. But we'll come back to the. We'll come back to that. The we'll come back to that. So the sync can take anywhere between five to ten minutes. Um, I've seen it faster. I've seen it longer. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go through and uh, set up the autopilot uh, deployment profile now. Yep. 
Um, so deployment profiles and create profile. Windows PC. Oh. HoloLens. Hey. All right. That wasn't there before. Hey, it was not. I don't know. I'm just typing words because you aren't Sounds saying good. anything. Yeah, no, it's good. It's there's, good. There's not yeah. enough underscores there. Yeah, this is not starting uh, with a star. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Got you, man. Um, Got thanks. you. Cool. So the important gonna... one, if you go back one step, though, Adam. Oh, come on, Steve. The convert or targeted devices to yeah. autopilot. This is if the device meets the minimum spec of 1709 or higher, and the group, the computer is added to a group, even though it's not in autopilot, but it's registered into Intune, it will go and register it across. Yeah. Um, so you don't then have to go and harvest the hashes for new devices that you've done out of the box differently. Now, mm. I've also heard that if you've if you've used this and then you delete an autopilot device that's been auto-registered this way, it won't auto-re-register itself. Is that true? I've not tested that. No. Interesting one. We'll have to we'll have to do a test. Exactly. Um, Okay, so we're just going to do this real quick. Uh, as as the name uh, minus the underscores is pointed out, we're going to do a very basic um, AADJ, uh, Azure AD joined uh, scenario. It's going to be user driven. Um, yep. You can do self deploying. That's fine. That's the thing. But we're going to do user driven for now. That's right. Um, uh, and most of these we're going to keep defaults. Um, so true. we're going to um, hide the license terms and privacy settings, which automatically accepts them. Yep. Um, we're going to uh, hide changing the account options where the standard user account, because we don't want our user to be an admin. Though um, technically this user will be the admin because he's also the they get that Intune the, admin. For that's global correct. admin. Because global they're a global admin. admin. And get in that yep. group. Yep. That's right. That's right. So one of the but your normal is, average user would not. That's mm -hmm. correct. That's correct. So one of the things to call out with the privacy settings, you can go and configure what's enabled and disabled via an Intune policy later. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so we're, I mean, at this point, we can turn white glove on or off if we want. It doesn't really matter. Um, sure. We're not going to be doing it, so we'll just leave it to no. Um, we can set our language region, which is great. Um, so we can do operating system default or we can specify. Um, so this is good in a scenario where you have uh, uh, multiple regions in your environment and you would just want to sort of standardize that. And um, have a different naming template for each region is that's one of the scenarios where you um, handle that, where you can yeah. sit there and say, in the US, we're going to start with US dash. Correct. That's exactly right. So we're going to say yes to the automatic configure keyboard, which is cool, um, is a thing that you need to think about if you are going to do white glove, that you can't do that because uh, yeah. it doesn't give you time to <laughs> to uh, to switch Correct. it over to the white glove stuff. Uh, and then we're not going to give it a name template um, because we don't care. Yeah, we um, don't name our computers. Exactly. And next. Um, we are going to... We don't have a group. We don't have a group, so let's just skip past that. We'll create the group really quickly, uh, and then we'll go back in and we'll, we'll assign it. Cool. So we can do this from the portal as well. Um, groups. Yep. New group. It's a security group that we want to Group name is going to be star. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Auto autopilot. Star Thank power. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Boom. And then we add our members. Yeah. Um, which would be a computer object, not a user object. So at this point in time, we don't have any computers registered to the tenant. Yeah. Yep. So we don't need or, to do that. Oh uh, yeah, dynamic. we should probably do that as a dynamic device. Yes, but do you have the query really quickly? Yes. Give me uh, three seconds. Okay. Uh, end point. Do, 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 do. So what we're talking through here is the dynamic membership rule is the ability to dynamically add any computer that's registered to the tenant that's running Windows 10 into this group, um, which is great because then it saves us having to worry about anything, uh, any policy not applying. Mm -hmm. And we covered this in depth in the in the first video and talked about the is the ZTD ID and yep. what that means and where that comes from and those sorts of things. One the, the one thing you need to be mindful of as well is when using dynamic groups, sometimes the computer object can drop out and need to 
reprocessed before it comes back into the group. Yep. Um, so you may have a situation where it doesn't apply correctly. So just calling that out, it's something to be understanding of with enrollment status yep. page as well. Cool. So just hit save. Hopefully so that's pause, pause your video at this moment if you want that code there, but you can easily Google that. Um, all right. So we now have that group being Star Power, and we're now going to go back to enroll devices. Uh, up an enrollment status. Profile. Oh, yeah, we need to, we need yep. to do that. Very uh, good. And then we assign the time. properties, and then we Just go to assignments, in. edit, and we're going to select our group being Star Power. Star Power. And we have start, save all the way through, and we're all happy. Sweet. Um, we'll do the ESP as well. Um, yeah, so the ESP because, really quickly. Yeah. Super simple. Uh, no, I would yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, this the UI is a little weird. you got to click on the uh, all users and devices to get into it. Um, so That's we'll just... the default yeah. policy. It's, uh, yes, it's the default policy. So if you go and have a second policy over the top of it, it comes down in priority. Mm -hmm. um, but the default's always going to be the last one that's hit. Uh, uh, yep. I'm going to go yes. We've got uh, a we'll out of 60 minutes. Yeah, we'll keep things in. fairly default here. Um, most of this is, is fairly well tuned. Um, we do want to uh, block device until the required apps are installed. So we want to say selected on that last one. The last mm -hmm. one we selected. Yep. Yep. And, and we're going to select the company portal as our as our app that we expect to be installed. Yep. Um, we'll also probably want to assign that. Mm -hmm. yes. Cool. Okay. Cool. Let's go into and the app. Yeah. Where so you need to apps? apps on my hand side. <laughs> I've got it collapsed and uh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. portal. Excuses, excuses. <coughs> Properties. I'm I'm just waiting for you guys to tell me what to do. Yes. And then we edit and we're going to uh, add a group as required. Yeah. Yeah, now this is an important thing to just point out is that there's a required section and then an available and an yeah. uninstall, which is different than most of the other things where you go to assign. Mm -hmm. Most of them are just, you know, include or exclude, and and these yep. specifically have different stuff here. So that's just... right. Okay, so we've got apps, we've got ESP, we've got a autopilot, autopilot profile. Autopilot. We have a license, and we have a user. Um, so all we're missing now is that device uh, to be registered. Um, so yep. basically, what we need to do now is hopefully we've got a a machine. Cool. Uh, we're gonna, we here's one we prepared earlier. Here's one we prepared earlier. We're going to harvest the hash uh, using uh, the get Windows Autopilot info. And we'll uh, do it online, so automatically correct. push it up for it. Shift F10. Connect to the internet. Yes. Oh, PowerShell. We'll do, we'll do Ben's way this time. Oh, thank you. Okay. The correct way. Okay. So we're going to set the execution policy to bypass. Set execution policy, yeah, bypass. Cool. And now we will go install scripts. What letter comes next? <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll breathe in, and then you'll breathe out, and then in, and then out. Yes. Yep. This looks a little bit better. A little bit better. Um, if you're the nosy person like I am, um, I generally will put in uh, verbose to make this uh, a bit more fun. Do me a favor and don't put in .ps1. <laughs> All Steve's fault. It's always I'm comfortable Steve's fault. with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. All right, cool. Yep, should auto complete. 
Dash online. Yeah, put in a group tag as well because it's, oh, no, we're just going to breeze past that. Exactly. All right, cool. Um, so this won't take super long. Um, the online thing we've talked about before, um, it's it's pulling down a couple of other modules um, that it relies on. It's basically automating the process of grabbing the CSV um, and then turning it, you know, and then bundling it up and then authenticating and pushing it into uh, your tenant. Um, it's a really, really good feature. Um, it's actually something that I'm, I'm quite surprised that people still don't, there's so many people that don't know that it's uh, an option. Um, that you can use the online piece. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, everybody uses the. So this originally started as a create this, create a CSV file, yep. take the CSV file, go in, import it in your portal, and and that's what we did in our first video, I believe. Yeah, um, that's correct. And actually, and we've no, got in our first video, we had exported the JSON and injected it. Yeah, perhaps. Um, but uh, if you want more info about that, we've got videos that's where right. we covered that. And um, in I'm trying to talk. I can't talk. Talk and type, Stephen. Sorry. Um, we've had we have other videos where we've covered that in more in depth. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. blogs and things. Um, Michael Niehaus wrote the module or the, mm -hmm. the script. So um, check that out on Microsoft. Dot wow. Microsoft. <laughs> it's an interesting email address. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good sign right there. Look at that. We have our hey, branding. Check it out. I just got lucky remembering my password there. So the first time we have to consent on behalf of the organization, this is another reason that we uh, need to be GA uh, at this point. We um, don't need to consent on behalf, but it is best practice too. That's correct. That's Otherwise, everyone's going to get that prompt, and it's going to be a correct. nightmare. Yep. Okay, so now this part does actually take a little while, and it'll take a minute for this to all get registered up. Um, so we will just fast we'll, forward past this on the editing if I remember to edit it. Otherwise, <laughs> just know that if you if we keep talking from this point, <laughs> and, and we're not at the the next screen, uh, then I forgot to edit it. Okay, so we're back. Um, you can see that the uh, import time took 184 seconds. So just make up what we were talking about on your own um okay so now what so uh, we have cool. now so, uh, put the device yeah, so, in so we probably should go check it out right we'll just I'm go sure see it's if it's here. actually works you know so at the moment it says it has um so we'll go into enroll devices and then devices uh, and check it out we have our magical thing now one thing to note it is the profile status is saying not assigned um so this is another one where we're probably going to need to fast forward a little bit um, we can't do anything until that dynamic group uh, rule takes effect. Um, it might be there uh, already, um, but then the uh, the autopilot assignment pol policy uh, takes, again, another, say, five to ten minutes to actually yep. uh, assign. So what we need to do, though, is if we go back to devices, we mm -hmm. at least need to hit the sync for the first time. So if you oh, don't that, the, the, the script already hit the sync for us. Does it go to enroll devices for me? It does, yeah. The last, but we we can we can do it. Uh, and device profiles, oh, yeah, devices, yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So last successful yeah. sync, but let's sync again because it's always good to resync it. Of course. Um, there is a limited number of times you can do that per minute or per hour. Yeah, um, and I have hit it. If you if you get here and you hit sync and you start getting errors. You've, um, hit you've hit that mark where you can't sync anymore. Uh, you yep. can't break anything. It just it it doesn't look nice. Um, what I always do is I always end up hitting sync instead of hitting refresh because yep. you know the icon is exactly the same. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh -huh. I'm a pictures kind of guy, so you yeah. know. So this is going to take a while. So we'll we'll do the same thing. We'll just fast forward. Right. Um, I'm gonna go we'll back to nachos. Beautiful music in the background or something. All right, so we are back. Um, that took a long time. You can probably check the clock and see <laughs> how long that actually took, but it took about five minutes. Um, okay, so we have a uh, an assigned profile now. Yep. So if we zoom in, you see that little guy. Look, zoom in. What's up? Um, Ooh, we so can much. also reverse check that this is applied as well um, by going into the uh, devices, enroll devices, uh autopilot policy and just confirm that's right but before we do that uh, mm -hmm. i'm going to assign a user oh cool oh fancy la dita 
So that will put my name on there. Always hit save. I keep forgetting yes. to do that, yeah. and then I keep wondering why it's not sticking. Yeah. So you can also, this is where you can uh, uh, populate the group tag thing if you want to start tagging your things. Um, I think yep. group tags are a great way of uh, managing devices because um, you can, we, we've obviously got that group there with the um, uh, with the ZTD ID uh, dynamic membership. Um, you can yep. also create automated things with group tags, which I'm pretty sure we've done a video on. Yes, um, we have. Yeah. So if we go uh, back to devices. Uh, yeah, enroll devices. devices. Deployment, deployment profiles, profiles. Yep. click on those, and assign assigned devices. devices, and there we like go. I know, I know it's set assigned, but it's just good to be able to go in and just the validate. Budget. Exactly, okay. especially if you are, if you have multiple um, policies, um, you want to make sure that it's gone to the correct one. This is where you can check that. Yep. All right, so we are there, and Sweet. just for uh, the... reboot your machine from there, yeah. Please. Just a moment. All right, here we go. Fun time. Yeah. All right, what we're expecting is to be at the autopilot Ubi screen with our tenant branding and username. Yes. Once it loads up after a moment or three. <laughs> and then, so what you'll note there is it actually skipped the region and keyboard selection. Yeah. So that's what... told it to in the autopilot profile. Sorry, Ben. Right. Um, yeah, no, no. I just wanted to uh, sort of drop on that as well. So when, it, when I was suggesting uh, or when I said earlier that you need to be careful with skipping this stuff if you want to do uh, things like white glove, um, you have to do white glove before this point. So if you skip the region and the keyboard, you don't get the chance to do that. Um, so it is just something that you need to need to be cognizant of. Um, it speeds things up. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, but it does remove some of that. Check it out. And there we are, folks. Welcome to Microsoft Services. So this is a new uh, thing that we've started. This is I, I've seen several cases of this so far, and this seems to be some some weird bug. Um, <laughs> you should not normally see this, um, but we th this is being investigated as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, definitely strange. So yeah, anyway, if I put in my password that I should remember, but really we're gonna stop the video here um, because yep. this is it, we, we're there, we've done, we've, built everything out to be able to autopilot. The machine is going to provision into our tenant. It's going to be good to go. Um, we'll see the enrollment status page pop up here in just a moment, and we will kill it. So so there it is. So you've seen end-to-end -end, uh, setting up an Intune tenant um, from scratch, setting up your trial, setting up the uh, Azure Active Directory, and setting up autopilot. And just like that, I mean, Probably when we cut this, I mean, even if we, without cutting this, we're probably an hour, maybe, yep. uh, end to end. And that's with some fumbling some some stuff around here. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you do this, you know, when so when you do this in your production, uh, you if, you watch our, if you watch our, um, our video, um, our first video, we go into much more detail on this. But, you know, you're going to pick, you're going to have a domain name and you're going to be assigning that to, uh, to your stuff, you're going to be putting in credit card information so that you can buy licenses and things. But just to get a proof of concept up and running, excuse me, up and running for your um, for your company. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, if we put it into these terms, we've built a tenant and a device in almost the time that it would take you to do OSD for like two machines. Yeah, for um, sure. with Config Manager. So and now you just spin up the next, plug in the next machine and go to town, and you're 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 there with no infrastructure. It's pretty cool. It is and cool. if you're labbing this, we uh, have a video on uh, being able to build your machines quickly and even injecting a JSON file in here, which we can get into more detail on um, in other videos. So we've got a lot of videos on our channel. A lot of them talk about this. We've got several autopilot, several provisioning videos, things like that. But we just wanted to revisit this from a you know new 
um, screens, new uh, GUIs, new URLs kind of perspective, yeah. new experience, and just kind of take you there. And so look, even, before we can even sum up, we're already about to be at the log on screen. So uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Yep. So, so cool. Anything else, guys? No, no I, think I, think, uh, I think you summarized it very well. Awesome. All right. Well, um, thanks, guys, for walking us through that. And um, hopefully you will stick around on the channel if you're new here. Um, definitely dig through. And uh, otherwise, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. See ya. Bye.